We've got our models, we've got our views, now we're ready to glue them together with the view models. Now that being said, I want to note that we did create all of our models and then we created all of our views and now we're going to be creating all of our view models. But when you're building your own application, you don't necessarily have to follow this order. For example, you might build half of your views, half of your view models and half of your models and just iterate over and over again. But for this series, I felt like it would be easier to do each of them one by one so that we could focus on the characteristics of each layer. But now onto the view models, we're gonna begin by creating a view models folder in our project, so view models. And the first view model we're gonna create is our view model base. So this is the class that all of our view models are going to inherit from. And what is so special about view model base is that it's gonna implement I notify property changed. So I notify property changed is an interface that the view in WPF automatically hooks into and our view model will be able to raise an event on this interface. Let's actually get that implemented real quick. So this event that we raise is this property changed. And when we raise this, we're gonna tell the UI what bindings to update. So we're gonna have a method on our view model base. So that's easy to raise this event in classes that inherit from view model base. So this can be protected so that only the inherited class can call it. It can be void because all it's gonna do is raise the event and this is gonna be called on property changed. So we're gonna call this whenever a property changes. And inside of here, all we're gonna do is take our property changed event, and if anything is subscribed to it, then we will invoke it with the sender as this view model and some property changed event args. So these property changed event args take in a property name. So we're gonna get that property name as a parameter to this on property changed method. So let's generate that. And now we'll be able to just call this method to tell our UI whenever a property value has changed so that our views can re-grab the property value and update the UI. And now that we have this infrastructure in place, we can start creating view models for our specific views. So we're gonna start off with the make reservation view model. It's just a class for that. And this will inherit from view model base as all of our view models will. And we're also gonna have a reservation listing view model so another class for that same thing inherit from view model base and then lastly we're also going to have a main view model so a class for that and this is going to be used for our main window and simply inherit from view model base here as well so let's start by focusing on the make reservation view model so what are we going to define on this view model well we're going to define everything that our make reservation view needs to bind to. So for example, we have this text box for the user's username, and we're gonna want that username text in our view model so that we can eventually make a reservation. So that being said, we're gonna have a binding on our username text box to some kind of username property on our make reservation view model. So let's define that property, and for this, I'm gonna use a predefined snippet I have. I have a link to this in the description so you can download it if you wish, and this is called prop change. And what this does is scaffolds out a property and automatically calls on property changed for the property name. So this property is gonna be a string and this is the username property. And this property name is what we use for our binding. So whatever we've typed into this text box is going to be set as this username property value. So moving on to the other fields, we also have a floor number and a room number. And we're gonna need properties for those as well in our view model so that we can bind to them. So let's do another prop change. And these are gonna be integers. So the room number, there we go. And also a floor number. And now that we have both of these properties, we can bind to those on our view. So set up a binding on those text boxes. This is for the floor number. And then we also have a binding to the room number in this other text box. And then the last two fields we have are the start date and end date. So we're gonna have properties for those on our view model as well. So more prop change, but these are gonna be date times now. And we have the start date as this first property, and then also the end date, which is also gonna be a date time called end date. And now we're gonna to have to bind to both of these as well. So this selected date on our date picker is gonna be a binding to the start date for the start date field. And then same thing for the end date, just a binding to the end date field. So that takes care of all the fields. Now onto the buttons. So these buttons on our view are gonna have to notify the view model when they get clicked. And to do that in WPF, we use commands. So we can set a command on this button and this can bind to a command on our view model. So in our view model, we're gonna have a couple of commands and these commands have to implement the I command interface. So let's implement that. And this first command will be for the submit button. So we'll call this the submit command and it can just be read only. 
So this doesn't have to use property changed or anything because it doesn't change. We're only going to set it once in the constructor and then we're going to have another command and this can be the cancel command for the cancel button. So now we have both these commands and we can bind to those in our view. So the submit button will bind to the submit command and then the cancel button will bind to the cancel command. And we'll eventually initialize these commands in the constructor. But for now, we're just going to be focusing on the view models. So the commands are going to come later. But for now, our view model is providing our view with everything it needs. And we have all of our bindings set up. So that's actually everything we need for this make reservation view model. So moving on to the next view model, we have our reservation listing view model. And what does our reservation listing view need? It's going to need a list of reservations to display inside of this list view. And it's also going to need a command to take us to the make reservation page. So let's start off with the command that'll be pretty simple. So just another I command, we can call this the make reservation command. And same thing, just read only. And we'll eventually initialize that in the constructor. So now let's bind to that on our make reservation button, bind to the command, the make reservation command. So now all we have to do is provide our view with a collection of reservations. So this is going to have to be an observable collection. So let's create a field for that an observable collection. And these are for the reservations. And what is the type of the item in our collection? Well, they are going to be reservations, which we have to find in our model. But the issue with this reservation model is that it does not implement I notify property changed. So it doesn't implement this interface that we have on view model base. And that's an issue because we want to bind to these properties and binding to an object that does not implement I notify property change could result in memory leaks. Also, it would kind of be poor separation of concerns to bind directly to our model because all the view wants is the properties to bind to doesn't care about anything else or any of our business logic. So that being said, we're going to create a reservation view model. So just a class for that. And this class will indeed implement I notify property change. So no chance of memory leaks. And it's also just going to give the view exactly what it needs, nothing more. So what does our view need? It needs a room ID, a username, a start date and an end date. So those are these first four properties on our reservation. Let's just copy these for simplicity. And these can also be read only because they are not going to change. And also this room ID, this is the room ID that we have defined in our model, which contains the floor number and room number. But on the UI, we're just going to be displaying this as a string. So we can just have a string for the room ID. But now where are the values for these properties going to come from? So we could get all of these properties through the constructor. But an easy way to do this is just get the entire reservation model through the constructor. So we are going to import our reservation.models namespace, and this will be the reservation and we'll put this into a field. So generate that field can just be read only. And now all of these values can just come from our reservation field. So they can be calculated values that just dig into the reservation and get the data that we need. So we'll get the room ID and we can call to string on that. And then same thing for these other properties. So we just copy all of these calculated properties, except now we're going to be getting the username, the start time and the end time. So now we see that this class is a really good representation of how view models glue the model and the view together, because these are the properties that the view needs. And here's our model right here. It might also be useful to do a little null check here on room ID just in case. So we can do that with a question mark. But now we're ready to use our reservation view model. So set that as the type for our observable collection. And now let's instantiate that collection here in our constructor. And let's talk about what this observable collection does. So what we can do is set this observable collection as the item source of our list view. So there's a dependency property on here, the item source, and that'll be a binding to this observable collection on our view model. And the nice thing about observable collection is that it implements an interface called I notify collection changed. So every time we add items or insert items or remove items from this collection, our list view is going to automatically update. So let's expose this observable collection as a property that we can bind to. And I like to expose this as an I enumerable. So same type reservation view models, and we'll call this reservations. And it can just be a property that points to our reservations field. And the reason I like to expose this as an I enumerable is just for encapsulation. So any class outside the reservation listing view model can't just grab this property 
and add or remove items however it pleases. But in some cases, maybe you don't even want that encapsulation, and you can just make it an observable collection type if you wish, but I'm going to leave it as an I enumerable for now, because this is all that the view needs is this I enumerable that it can bind to. So let's do that binding. So this is a binding to our reservations collection on our view model. And let's get rid of these hard-coded list view items that we use just for testing. And we also have to get rid of these hard-coded values in our grid view columns. So instead of this hard-coded 12 as the room ID, we can have a binding to the room ID property on our reservation view model. So let's grab that. So I do want to point out that all of our other bindings, such as the binding for the item source and the button, these bindings are going to point to our reservation listing view model. But since our item source for this list view are these reservations, and these reservations are a collection of reservation view models, then these bindings are actually going to point to the individual reservation view models. So we can access all of these properties and it'll display all of the data in our reservations. So we also want to display the username. So instead of the hard-coded singleton Sean, we're going to have a binding to username, also a binding to start date, and lastly a binding to end date. So with all that, we're going to be displaying all of our data inside of this list view. We're providing the list of data to our list view, and we also have this make reservation command, which we will implement later, but that's everything for the reservation listing view. And actually, let's hard code some reservations into this view model. So we'll just throw three in here, just some random data, try and keep it unique, and that should be good enough. So we'll see this in our list view when we get to running this. But the last view model we have to set up is our main view model. And this is going to provide bindings to our main window. So in the future, our main view model is going to be responsible for displaying the current view model of the application, which we will get into managing when we set up our navigation infrastructure. But for now, we can just hard code a property for it. So this is going to be a view model base. So it can really be any view model. And we'll call this the current view model. And we'll make it read only because we're just going to set this up in our constructor, just hard code it for now. So our current view model, we're going to start off with just the make reservation view model. And now in our main window, we can set the data context of this make reservation view as a binding to our current view model. And this current view model is going to be a make reservation view model. So since we set that make reservation view model instance as the data context for the make reservation view, that means on the make reservation view, all of the bindings that we have defined here are going to point to properties on our make reservation view model, which is exactly what we expect. So we have all of the properties that our make reservation view has to bind to, and our make reservation view is going to be able to access those because its data context is going to be a make reservation view model. So that being said, we also have to consider that our main window is trying to bind to a current view model. So that means the data context for our main window is going to have to be a main view model because that is where we have the current view model defined. So we could just go into our main window code behind and set the data context to some kind of main view model. But this is kind of a bad practice because that means our main window, which is really on the view layer, is directly referencing our view model layer. So they're coupled together, which is exactly what we don't want to do in MVVM architecture. So instead, what we're going to do is head all the way up to our app.xaml.cs and configure all of this in our application startup. So I still have all of this old stuff from when we were testing our model layer. But what we can do in this on startup for our application is we can set the main window for our application. So that's a property on application, which we inherit from. We can set that to a new main window instance. So that's this main window that we have right here. And for all of our bindings to work, we're gonna have to set the data context of the main window to a new main view model. So import that. And finally, we have to call main window dot show to actually display the main window. So since we're doing all this startup logic here in the one startup method and actually showing the window, that means that in our app.xaml, we're going to have to remove the startup URI, which is automatically going to display a main window on startup. But we don't want that to happen because we're manually doing it in our app.xaml.cs on startup. But now our data context for our main window is a main view model. So that means on the main window, we will have access to properties on our main view model such as this current view model, which we will bind to. So what are we waiting for? Let's test this out. All right, so our application is started. And from what I see, we have no binding errors. So if we look at our little debug menu, this checkbox binding failures, zero. That's a great sign. 
So let's go into our make reservation view model and let's put breakpoints in these setters so that we can see that the values that we type into our text boxes actually propagate up to our view model. So let's type into our username and nothing happens. But what if I go to the next text box? Oh, there we go. Then it sends the value up to the view model. So the reason there's a delay is because let's look at the make reservation view. There's actually a setting that we can define on bindings and that is the update source trigger. So we can set that to property changed. And what this is gonna do is send the value of our text boxes text back up to the view model every time that we type each character into the text box. So we do want this actually for all of our text boxes. So let's copy that down, the update source trigger. So it'll send the value up to the text box immediately. And I guess we also want it for the select date. Not sure if it matters there on the date pickers, but type a single character and automatically gets set as the property. And let's we'll go through and make sure all of these properties work. So the floor number is indeed working. The room number, the start date works as well. And last but not least, the end date. Oh, didn't put a breakpoint there. But there we go, that works too. So now again, we do not have navigation set up. So we're gonna have to manually change this to the reservation listing view. And then in our main view model, change this instantiation to a reservation listing view model. So we should see that view and view model. And there we go. Now we have our reservation listing view. But this time, oh, we got binding failures. So what are these? And this is for the start date and end date. So the start date property is not found on object to type reservation view model. Is that true? So let's go to our reservation view model. And oh, these are start time. So I'm trying to think of how I wanna approach this. I think I wanna change these properties on the view model to be start date and end date. And then we're gonna dig into the start time property on the reservation, but all I want is the date. So let's try that. So there we go, the bindings have been fixed, but I don't really wanna display the time with those. So we have two choices here. We could do some kind of string formatting on our reservation listing view. So text box have something called a string format. We could define that here, but I think what I wanna do instead is just set all of this up in the view model. So these can just be strings for start date and end date. And what we can do is take the start time and call to string and pass in a format for this. And whoa, I have not seen this with Visual Studio. So we can select the formatter that we want in this dropdown that just shows up. So actually, I think this is the one I want, the short date. So this is just your typical month, day, year. That's exactly what I want. And there we go, that looks great. So we're displaying our data, our view and model has been glued together by our view model, but there's still some things that we're missing. So we can't navigate between our views. If we click make reservation, it doesn't do anything. We haven't set up any of those commands, such as the command to navigate us to the make reservation view. And we also don't have a command to submit a new reservation, but we have covered the essentials. We have the models, the views, and the view models. So you should have a pretty good idea of how to structure your own MVVM WPF application. But as we see, MVVM is more than just models, views, and view models. There's also commands, there's navigation. You might have some services if you're loading data from a database. So stay tuned, we're gonna cover those advanced topics too. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.